morning, Berean Church. Hey, good morning and welcome to Berean. I am Pastor Justin and this is... And I am Pastor Kevin and you are on the pre-show. That's right. And if you're unfamiliar with the pre-show, that is uh, the show before the show live at Berean Church here in Pleasant Hill. Absolutely. Pastor is going to continue his series in just about 10 minutes and it's entitled Just a Little Talk. That's right. And this week we're talking about the woman at the well. The woman at the well. So that should be an interesting conversation to look into and see how that applies to our life today. So you'll want to buckle in and get ready. The free show is just a time that we talk about random stuff. And today I talk, I kind of hit a topic that when we think of spring, for some reason I think of this particular thing to eat. Yeah. And it is? Pizza. Jello. Oh, Joe, so, oh, that's that too. So one of the ways that you can interact with us is answering this question. The, the question of the day today is what is your favorite flavor of Jell-O? Oh, man. Flavor, favorite, flavor, favorite flavor of Jell-O. Of Jell-O. Favorite, flavor, favorite flavor of Jell-O. Can you say favorite, favorite flavor of Jell-O? Favorite flavor of Jell-O. Favorite flavor of Jell-O. Jell-O. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I feel like we've done this before. I think uh, we have. <laughs> not not the favorite Ralph flavor. Ralph That's it was Ralph Ruggs. <laughs> that's right. If you don't know what that is, you have to go back a couple weeks. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so, so Jell-O actually um, was first marketed in 1908. All right, first of all, we got to stop. Stop. What is your favorite Jell-O? Stop. My favorite Jell-O, uh, just in spite of this list, <laughs> is, is I'm going to say banana strawberry. Like... Do they make a strawberry banana? banana. Jello? Like Jello? Yes, oh, strawberry banana. I don't know if I have it. But see, that. when I always have it, we put bananas, real bananas, and strawberries in it. Oh, too, okay, though. okay. But it is strawberry banana. And your favorite would be? Oh, man. Probably, I probably two. Like nope, the, one. One. All right, very blue. Very blue. Okay, very never blue. heard of it even. Okay, so we're going to go well, down through blue. that list. But before we do, before we do, um, and, and it was became really popular in 1920 and 1930. Um, and Jell-O was most popular in the 1970s, which was when I was a kiddo. Um, least, least to most favorite Jell-O, starting with 22. Okay, least. These are the least to the most. And just so you know, we pulled these off the internet. This particular list is probably the list that I disagree with the most of any topic we've ever had. Are you I ready? Don't, I don't know if that's true. Well, wait. But there's more. There's more. Okay. All so, right. but just a second. What are some ways that they can get to know us? We hey, already said you can they do so by just know. commenting with us, or you can go online at brainhub.com, fill out the I'm new card, or drop us a line in the chat icon in the lower right-hand corner. We got about seven minutes before service, and Pastor is going to continue his series on just a little talk, uh, talk with Jesus. And today's topic is our message title is the woman at the well. So you'll want to buckle and get ready for that. Make sure you get your coffee, get your kids up, get everybody up. And here is our list today. Our list today is From worst least to best jello. Jello. Okay. Kay. Least. Okay. This is funny, actually. Number 22, strawberry banana. I know. That's like, what I told you're, you. You're at the bottom of the barrel. I'm at the bottom you're of the, the list. Of the and I can't believe that. So we're going to walk through, and I'm going to go back to strawberry okay, banana in a little funny. bit. Okay. Okay. Lime is 21. Berry and, blue, wasn't that yours? Is, yeah, is so, but I was going to say, but it's a tie for me between lime and berry blue. <laughs> and they're, they're, those are the three worst, they're saying. I would say, Kay. though, that uh, those to me, when I'm looking out, like, and cherry are the three common ones. Are and cherry's in lime, here a little bit later. Berry blue and cherry are ones you see the most often. Okay. Think about that as we go down through this list that I disagree so with everyone terribly. everyone makes it, even Kay. though they hate it. So, number 13 is... Or 19. 19, excuse me, is cherry. Cherry. So We so, have one minute, by the way. So the four that we like we the best are the quick. worst. Okay. Then lemon. there's lemon, black, black cherry, ba- black cherry raspberry, raspberry, grape. Great. Grape's a good one. Okay, number 14, beating Blueberry, out our favorites. Blue, blueberry, pomegranate. Who serious? even knows what that is? Fruit, Fruit punch, punch mango, mango, tropical fusion, pineapple. Stop. Island pineapple beats out, beats out blueberry and strawberry banana. Well, it just beats out the common core, like okay. cherry and lime. And this is my worst. This is the one I least like. Number nine. Watermelon. Watermelon. Cranberry. Okay, cranberry. Are you telling me that cranberry You know how is... it's at the top of the list? Because everyone buys it for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and it's sold out. Jello though? What are you I'm just trying for? to help <laughs> move it up the list. I have no idea. Apricot. Apricot. I don't even know. Apricot I'm going to go to the store and cherry. see if those things are even there. Exactly. Okay. Blackberry fusion. We got seven seconds. Peach, melon, 
cherry. Number lemonade. one, orange. Strawberry, That's number wrong. one, orange. Good morning, Berean Church. Oh, we're there. We are hey, there. We're right there. That's right. I didn't see us. Hey. Good morning. Are you awake? Because it appears that I must not be. Hey, well, wake up. Wake up. And this is your moment to find somebody around you and greet them. Let them wake know up. that uh, you're glad that they are here. Or if you're live joining us online, grab your coffee, wake up your kids, and uh, get ready. Get ready because God's got some great things. His pastor continues his series on just a little talk. And today he's going to be looking at the conversation with the woman at the well. That's right. That should be a great message. So you want to buckle in and get your hearts ready for that. Hey, and we um, have a question of the day. Question of the greedy. day. Question of the day is, what is your favorite flavor of Jello? We chose this topic because of spring. I always think of Jello for some reason. I don't know. It's springy. I'm in charge of picking the topics. And so if you want to know the least to the to the best flavors, you can go on the free show later today and find out. We Personally, disagree. I think it's all a lie. We totally rigged. disagree with the list, but <laughs> we didn't make it. All, all right, right. Hey, so we got some announcements this morning. Number one is simply this. Today, we are starting our opening our registration for camps that is coming up uh, in June 24 through 28. And so registrations are open, so you can go out into the main lobby, and uh, there will be a table there and a couple of iPads to ask any questions to get your kid signed up and get their spot guaranteed. To reserved. clarify, this is youth camp, youth not camp. kids camp. Yes. Youth camp. Yep, teen camp. Yes. So uh, sign up today and uh, make sure you get their spot reserved. Just five days away is one of the greatest things we do all year long, and that is Night of Worship on Good Friday. It's amazing. You'll want to make sure to be here. It's a great way to kick off the Easter holiday, and um, we would love to have you here. We also have um, communion during that yeah, during that evening. So whether you're online or here in person, this is the time we should all gather together and uh, just lift up the name of Jesus together on Easter weekend. Yeah, so set a date and make sure you make it out for that. It's a great time to welcome in the Easter's. Not like set season. a date, set that date. The date. The date is, so is the date. March, March 29th. It yep. is at 6 p.m. right here in the main auditorium because we're going to pack the place. We believe God's going to do some great things, yep. and we just want to lift his name up for all that he's done for us and what Easter really is truly about. Okay, Spring Connect Groups, uh, leader sign up. We are looking for leader sign up and host homes. And so if you're uh, thinking about being a part of a group this time, and maybe you've been a part and like you wanna do something more, hey, consider opening up your home as a host home or a leader, so. And so if you say, oh, hey, I've been a leader for a long time, they know, no, we don't. We need you to go on and sign up to make sure that we get you on for next week because we're gonna open up the groups on Easter Sunday. Yeah, that's right. So what does a leader entail? So like if you're a sign up, does that mean like they have to come up with their own stuff? Leaders don't need tails. They don't need tails. No, they, they don't. don't. No, they don't need to come up with their own stuff. We provide everything, give you the breakdown of how the how the group should run and give you all of the materials that you need. It's really simple because the majority of our groups are built on community and they kind of go through these things together. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It truly is. It truly is is. All right, so Launchpad. Hey, Launchpad is happening every week in room M1 that's straight across the hallway from the main auditorium. Yes. Not every week. Well, not every, no. Not next week, not, not Easter, because week. it's a fifth Sunday, and we don't do it on the fifth Sunday, but we do it on the first through the fourth, and so we'll be there today, and then we'll be there directly after Easter as well. Yeah, so jump in anytime, and uh, we have donuts there. We'll be there. Donuts! It's a lot of fun. Donuts, speaking of donuts, if you like donuts, you'll need to make sure to be here next Easter. All of our Easter services are uh, regular service times, 9 and 1045. And we're done.
many believe there is joy in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Come on, let's all stand and put our hands together.
Lord, come and break every chain in our heart, oh God. Lord, shake up the ground that we stand upon, Lord. Lord, we need your presence in our lives. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. May we put on the garment of praise this morning. May we put on the garment of praise, Lord. May we put on the garment of praise. Oh, as we praise you, as we worship you. into his presence. Let's engage into him. Lord, I worship you. I worship you. God, there is none like you. There is none like you. Jesus to shake the ground this morning. Father, we need your glory. We need your presence. Come on this morning. I want to challenge you to engage in his presence even deeper than before. As we lift our voices, as we lift our hands, as we raise our hearts, God, this morning we make room for you.
Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way. Let your glory. Let your glory fall down. Let your glory fall down. Sing it again. Fall like rain. come this morning. Lord, we're thankful for your presence. Anoint your servant as he brings your word today. Oh God, speak to us. In your name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Turn to one next to you and say, I'm thankful for the spirit of God. Amen. drop it off in the giving box on the way out of the auditorium, or you and those watching online can simply text the word CONNECT to 77411. And we also want to thank everyone for your faithful giving. As a reminder, you can give by grabbing an offering envelope out of the seat pocket in front of you and dropping it off in the giving box on the way out of the auditorium. Or you can give by texting your dollar amount to the number 84321. You can also give online by going to bereanhub.com slash giving. Once again, we want to thank all of you for joining us today. And remember, we are a church that extends hope and wholeness to broken humanity.
If you believe that, let me hear your hands. It all starts with an invitation. It's amazing how closely we're all linked. We're all linked together. Well, this is Palm Sunday, which marks the last week of the journey toward uh, the cross and then the resurrection. So next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. What a great day to celebrate God's goodness. Amen? So this is your last week to extend an invitation to get someone to come. Thank you for you that have put the thought bubbles or the conversation bubbles up on the wall there. Appreciate that. We've had faith conversations. That's encouraging to read. And uh, I want to invite you to join us on Friday night, Good Friday night at 6 o'clock. We'll have a worship time together. We'll share communion together and just take time to meditate and ponder what all Jesus did for us when he gave his life on the cross. So join us uh, Friday night at 6 and then a great celebration on Sunday. We will have some refreshments in the lobby as we have in the past, but we really have made a conscious decision to not make it about the event, but to make it about the worship service. So we don't have a lot of other things going on. There's no egg hunt. There's no um, clowns. There's no jugglers. There's no knife throwing, flame swallowing um, to try to get people to come. We want the focus to be on the resurrection. So join us on Sunday morning. Now, I will say to you, those of you that um, regularly come at first service, and I'm assuming that's most of you, that you might want to consider coming to second service. Um, just for space. I anticipate that first service, based on our history, will be really, really full. And we want to make sure that everyone has a seat. So do not stay home. And those of you that are watching online right now, I'm glad for those of you that join us online, some that live far away, some that are shut in. There are a number of reasons why you might join us online. And we're glad to be online so that you can join us. However, If you can be here, shut the screen off and join us. Hello? It's about community. It's about community. So I've read of larger churches that are shutting off their live stream altogether so that people will come to church. Here's what that does. They just go to another live stream. And I want to make it clear, those that are online that need to join us online, we are so glad you're there and glad to provide the service. But the Christian faith was not intended to be lived out behind a screen, but in face-to-face -face community. Yeah. Amen? So join us. Having said that, we hope the house will be full and invite some of you to come to second service if you want to do that and make room so everyone has a seat. Friday night at 6 o'clock, join us and we'll celebrate together. Well, this morning, we're going to continue our series on just a little talk, conversation with Jesus, with one of my favorite stories of Jesus' conversations, and that's with the woman at the well in John chapter 4. So if you want to turn to John chapter 4, open your digital device and follow along, we're going to walk through that story. The key to Pentecostal faith, as I've said over and over again, is to share your faith with others. You will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be witnesses. Every spirit-filled believer is a witness. Some are good at it, and some not so good, but you're a witness, either to the goodness of God or something else. So we've been talking about how to have faith conversations, looking at the master of faith conversations, and that's Jesus Christ. We talked the first week about Greeks who made a connection with Philip, a personal connection, and came to hear from Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to hear him and see him so bad he climbed a sycamore tree. The rich young ruler wanted to meet him, didn't like the answer, and went away sorrowful. And last week, Doubting Thomas, who became a, a forceful believer after an encounter with Jesus. Jesus had a detailed interaction with the woman at the well, one of the longest and most detailed conversations that we find in the New Testament. It's marked with all of the drama 
a conversation can have. How many have had drama-filled conversations? How many of you had one this morning on your way to church? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> They're everywhere. And this gives all the nuances. And I just love to read the story. How many have heard me say that my favorite Bible story is the one I'm preaching on at the time? But this really is one of my favorites. I love the interaction. I love the way that she responds and how he responds back. She accuses, she argues, she questions, and she challenges Jesus. And he navigates all the way through it to the place where she believes in him as the Messiah, and an entire city is changed from that conversation that took place at a well. So let's walk through that, try to understand what happened, and you'll hopefully this morning see some patterns that took place Um, that we've seen take place over the weeks of this journey. And the first is, Jesus had a divine direction. Does that sound familiar? A divine direction, the Holy Spirit moving on his heart. The Bible says in John chapter four, verses four to six, now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. So it tells us that Jesus had to go through Samaria. I love the King James language here. It says he must needs go through Samaria. Does that mean that he had to go through Samaria to complete his journey? No, Jesus is traveling um, on his way from Judea back to Galilee, and the Jews did not want to go through Samaria. So there were alternate routes around that the Jews would normally take. So when he would say, I have to go through Samaria, it was not geographic. It wasn't to save some miles. It was because something else was happening. One commentator said this, Jesus' decision to go through Samaria was not merely a geographical necessity, but a deliberate action that exemplified his mission to reach out to all people, regardless of societal divisions, and to offer salvation and reconciliation. There was an inner compulsion for him to go to Samaria that day. An inner compulsion. Now we'll come back to that, but I want you to know that we are to be people led by the Spirit. How many believe that? That he's to direct our steps and direct our lives. And Jesus lived on the earth as a man filled with the Spirit of God to model for us what it's like. So when he says, I must needs or he must needs go through Samaria, there was a compulsion inside of him that was directing him to go through Samaria, even though the Jewish world would have rejected that. And when he got there, he sat down. Now, I know he's tired. The Bible says he's tired. He sat down. I think American Christians need to learn how to sit down. You need to learn how to sit down. Some of you are already timing how many minutes until you go to the, through the door to your next adventure. You already have a plan for what's going to happen next. And we're so, how many of you are busy? If that's all, see me Monday. I have some jobs for you. How many of you are busy? Come on, I know you are. We're all busy. There are things to do. You're busy when you're not busy. You're busy when you're watching something on television or the computer, trying to get it all in and all done. And Jesus, watch, has this compulsion to go through Samaria. And when he comes to the well at Sychar, he sends the disciples away to go buy food. And he sat down. The divine appointment would have been missed if Jesus hadn't sat down. Sometimes you need to just stand still, sit still, wait. I don't know if you've ever had this experience or not. I hope you have. 
where you felt like God was directing you to do something and then nothing transpired and you wonder, why did I feel like I needed to do this when nothing came out of this? It's because you didn't sit down. You didn't take time to wait that God might be doing something that you just need to pause. If he put a compulsion on you, there is something that's going to happen. Sit still. I talked to a brother, a pastor from uh, Tanzania uh, a number of years ago. And he said to me, we're in a group, and he said to me, I don't know how any Americans lead anybody to Jesus. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, because you're all moving all the time. You come out of your air-conditioned house, get in your car, roll up the windows, turn on the air and the radio, and you drive to one place to another and back and forth, and you don't ever slow down and take time. He said, in my uh, village that I live in, when somebody asks for directions, you don't point them, you walk with them. Our whole life is filled with pauses and walking and interacting with people, but we're so busy that if we're not careful, we'll miss the sit-down moments where God wants us to stand still and pause because I'm going to do something that will bless you and bless someone, 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 another person's life. (laughs) I don't know what happened there. Got an anchor tied to my tongue in that moment. I need to sit down. (laughs) I can give you a couple of examples. There was a meeting a few years ago I was at and I felt like I needed to be there and there was an individual that I wanted to talk to that I thought was going to be there and I didn't see them they weren't there and I'm standing at the back everybody's leaving and I just felt like I should stand still for a minute just stand still for a minute and the individual that I felt like God wanted me to interact with guess what happened saw me because I was standing still facing the opposite direction and walked up to me. Is anybody hearing me right now? Putting some pauses in your life, putting some sit down moments in your life, some standstill moments that when you feel that compulsion, it might just be that you missed an opportunity because you were too impatient to wait for what God is trying to accomplish. Sit down moments. So what I want to challenge you to do, I've said this over and over again. Spirit of God, speak to our hearts. Children of God, let us cultivate an ear to hear what the Spirit says. Unfortunately, many of us by our lifestyle are deaf to the voice of God. We're so busy. We're so interactive All the time something is happening that crowds out any opportunity to hear the voice of God. Cultivate an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the church. We need to learn to hear his voice, to listen, to take moments to hear him. The scripture is clear that we walk by faith, not by sight, that we need to listen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If any man over and over, Jesus says, has an ear, Let him hear what the Spirit says. And I'm going to suggest to you that we can't hear him if we don't ever sit down. How do you learn to hear his voice? Number one, shut up. Get quiet. I remember, I I just, my brain's going all the time. I've gotten sermon ideas off of billboards, off of basketball game. I mean, just God speaking. I want to be listening to that, and I'm thankful for that. But how many of you are like I am? I don't know. Maybe you're not, and thank God if you're not like me. It's, it's a good thing. But the first thing I do when I get in my car, well, the first thing I do is start it. And my car, my truck, annoys me. To start the engine, turn the key. (laughs) So I turn the key. Once it's started, you know the next thing I do? What's that? Nope. I don't do the seatbelt. I'm always always driving while I do the seatbelt. It's a waste of time. Anybody else? Car is moving and I do the seatbelt. Repent, thou sinners. The first thing I do is I turn on the radio. Anybody else? 
Nobody? Yeah, I turn on the radio. I listen to sports. I listen to talk. If I'm really tired, I'll listen to country because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I'll do something. I, I, and, and I remember there have been more than one time I've heard God say, I want you to shut off the radio and I want you to listen to me for a while. It's a sit down moment. Come on, it's a sit down moment. If you're married and your spouse says, sit down, we need to have a talk, how many of you have a panic attack? (laughs) When you want your child's attention, what you do, you say, sit down, I need to talk to you. There's a sit down moment. If we're going to hear the voice of God, you need to learn to quiet your spirit. You need to learn how to quiet your mind. And one of the great ways to do that, I believe, is by meditation and by journaling. And I'm not talking about transcendental meditation, where you take a voice, a verse of scripture, biblical meditation, is meditating on the law of the Lord. Take some time. Take 15 minutes. Shut the door. Shut off all the other sounds. Don't get those plugs out of your ears and just look at a verse of scripture and soak in it for 15 minutes and you'll be stunned at what you hear the spirit of God begin to speak up out of that. It's learning to hear his voice. Journal, write it down, write down what he speaks to you cultivate an ear. How many are hearing me this morning? Cultivate an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the church. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Jesus had a compulsion to follow through Samaria and took a moment to sit down. Second, Jesus made a personal connection. We are not um, hunting people. We are trying to win people. And in trying to win people, you have to make a personal connection. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said, will you give me a drink? Will you give me a drink? Now, if he was thirsty, there wasn't any way that he could get a drink. You brought your own pail and pulled the water up. And one of the things that he does in this moment, in this personal connection, is there's something about extending help or asking for help that opens a door for conversation. That if we look for opportunities, and I know this is hard for some of you, some of you can't even ask directions. You'd rather drive an hour in the desert than ask where to turn right. There are moments when you ask someone, now this is a silly illustration, But one of the top salesmen in a business that was selling to companies was like 6'5", and he was a huge guy. And he had a terrible time making any sales because he was so intimidating. He was so big and imposing, and they just had their guards up. So he developed, this is deceitful, okay? But he developed a technique. He would put a bunch of papers in his briefcase, unlatch the briefcase, put his finger on the side and hold the handle. And when he would walk in, he would trip himself and throw stuff all over the floor. And his sales skyrocketed. Because when we share a service together, an act of kindness, either done to you or done for someone else, there's conversation that develops out of that. Do I think that he was thirsty? Yes, I think he was thirsty. But I think there was a moment when he said, could I have a drink of water that she's not gonna be able to ignore that. She's gonna respond to that. And so while you're listening to God, this is a weird idea, but look for opportunities to either help someone or ask someone to help you. There's an opportunity, a bridge that's built. Look for someone that I was, um, opportunities are all around for us to extend and some people won't receive, but there's something about that connection, responding to felt needs, either yours or theirs. Benevolence with a gospel, um, gospel message, helping one another opens communication. And I wanna challenge us to open our eyes, to open our minds to opportunities rather than looking for an opportunity to witness, why don't we look for an opportunity to serve or be open to be served? We have, I wish a conversation had come out of this. It didn't, 
But we had Bible quiz yesterday, and I have discovered what my primary role is in teen Bible quiz on a quiz day. It is not being a quiz master. It's not being involved in that role. Little Eden Thomas walked up to me. We're sitting there, and she said, Pastor Gary, are you going to go get pizza today? <laughs> you better have value, Pastor Gary, going to get pizza. So to feed that crowd, I had to get 10 pizzas. So I walk in, and they had my pizzas ready. It's the first time that's happened. They're all ready. And the guy um, handed me five pizzas, and I took those. And then he said, I will grab the other five and carry them out. And my nature is, oh, don't worry about it. I'll get it. Anybody like that? I, no, I'll get it. I don't, I, don't, I don't need your help. I can carry these pizzas. <laughs> but instead, I said, thank you. I could use your help. And there was a little bit of an exchange there that was friendly simply because I let someone help me. Listen to me, punk. Let somebody help you. <laughs> Hello? There's interactions that happen when we share human kindness together. There's opportunity for conversations to develop out of that. Third, Jesus ignored a cultural distraction. She um, begins to argue with him. She says in verse 9, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. You are a Jew and I'm Samaritan and you're prejudiced against us. Now watch, the prejudice was real. The Jews thank God every day they weren't a dog, a woman, or a, or a Gentile, including the Samaritans. They were they were highly prejudiced against. And she had every right to challenge that. But Jesus didn't take the bait. If you want to share faith with someone, listen to me carefully, that's not the time to debate the social issues of the day. If you want to discuss this social, it, listen, this will help you. Write this down. This, put this on your fridge. If you want to discuss the social um, issues of the day, introduce them to Jesus first, and then the conversation will be easier. Because my goal isn't to win a political debate. My goal isn't to defend all the wrong that the church has done. My goal isn't to win every argument. I want you to meet the one that died for you and loves you and let him become real to you and then see where he leads you. And when she says, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, you're not gonna talk to me, um, she, he does not take the bait. And what's interesting, now watch this, people will challenge you and argue with you to defend themselves and keep it off the real issue. What do you mean? She's there at noon. Women didn't come to the well at noon to get water. Do you know why she came at noon? Because she was a woman with a horrible reputation. And she had to come when other people weren't there. Now watch how this unpacks because it's real around us. Someone who doesn't want you to deal with their real life issue will throw up a red herring argument to make you mad and get you off the track and put you in a debate posture rather than in an evangelistic posture. Don't take the bait. Understand, they're trying to throw you off. Well, well. How can you, how can you be against abortion and don't care about children after they're born? That's bait. You won't find anybody more anti-abortion than I am. But my goal isn't to win the debate. It's to get you to Jesus. How many are hearing what I'm saying? She wants to argue religion and prejudice to keep him from dealing with her heart issue. Have, have a little bit of preparation when you engage in a discussion. What does Jesus say? You're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. How do you ask me for a drink? And he said to her, this is so good. 
if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Do you see what he, he doesn't even respond. He doesn't defend. He goes right back to the reason for the conversation. Uh, if you knew who I was, you'd ask for living water. And so then she says, not only is she confrontational and combative, she's a smart mouth. She's a smart aleck. She said, and her lifestyle has created that in her, I'm sure. Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where are you going to give me this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his flocks and herds? She accuses Jesus of arrogance. You think you're somebody. You think you're special. You think you're holier than thou. How, I don't know if you're, how many have ever been accused of being holier than thou? And you have, a, you have this mindset, that don't respond and don't defend yourself. It's not about that. It's not about Jacob's well. It's not about winning the argument. It's not about proving your worth. I'm not arrogant. How dare you call me holier than thou? I'll tell you I ran a red light yesterday. She's attacking his character. And how does Jesus respond? He focuses on eternal life. He goes back to the issue that matters. He said to her, everyone who drinks this water shall be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. He brings it back to where it belongs on water of life, a relationship with Jesus. You see, it doesn't matter what someone believes politically. It doesn't matter how arrogant they think I am or super spiritual I think I am. You can call me whatever you want, but it doesn't change the issue. I can be an abysmal failure, but Jesus is still the answer of life. He's still the one we turn to. Everything she says has an element of truth, and he doesn't respond. He doesn't take the bait. He doesn't engage in Facebook posts. He brings her back. This is about life. This is about the water of life. And she responds a little closer. There's a little step she takes. The woman said, sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to come here to draw water. A little bit smart mouth still. Um, saying, all right, give me this water because she doesn't like coming at noon. It's the heat of the day. I'd love to have water where I don't have to come back to this well, where I never get thirsty again. She's thinking in natural terms. And Jesus doesn't respond to her. Now watch. She said, I want the water. And what he's gonna do is help her get ready for the water. So the third thing, fourth thing Jesus does. <laughs> now careful with this. Jesus created a spiritual confrontation. Some of you are just good at creating confrontation. There's nothing spiritual about it. Hello? A spiritual confrontation. Got to move her off the natural into the spiritual. And without missing me, it's like we're talking about water, and now he changes the subject, and he says to her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. And Jesus said, you're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have five, you've had five husbands, and the man you're with now is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. He spins the table. Jesus had a little punch in him too. Now, I want you to watch what spiritual life and the spirit-filled life is about, and I want you to hear my heart. We are Pentecostal. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We believe in praying in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. But our denomination as a whole has diminished the baptism in the Holy Spirit to a moment of speaking in tongues. 
And that is not what it's about. Do you need to speak in tongues? Yes. Is there power in speaking in tongues? Yes. Have you ever spoken in tongues or you haven't and want to? I can share with you how to receive that gift. But it's a gateway, an open door to other things. How did Jesus know that? He was a man walking full of the Spirit of God. And at that moment, he experienced what Scripture calls a word of knowledge. It's when God deposits in you information that you can't obtain any other way that enables you to minister to the person you're talking to. Have I ever had that happen to me? Absolutely. And it's a little bit scary because you have information that you don't know factually or by investigation whether or not it's true. I was praying for a man once who had come to see me and he told me this tragic story of his friend that he was helping drive a tractor and harvest uh, corn. And his friend climbed up in the silo to check how full the silo was. This was his story. And when he looked in, he fell into the silo on top of the corn and the door shut behind him. And as he struggled to get out, he drowned in the corn and died. And that very well could have happened. But I'm going to tell you, I saw a very different story. While he was talking, I saw him. I'm just going to tell you this because it's so bizarre. That they were gay lovers and they were having a fight, and the one man followed him up and shoved him in and shut the door. And I said, what you just told me is a blatant lie. You know that you were responsible for your lover's death, and if anyone finds out, you're going to prison. He didn't argue, didn't dispute it, stormed out the door, came back to a revival service, where I talked to him again and he admitted these gay relationships that he was ignoring and not responding to. I'm telling you, you might be wrong, but the gifts of the spirit are not just so we can have tongues and interpretation and prophecy. It's so in a moment of need, God can give you discerning of spirits. He can give you a word of knowledge. He can give you a word of wisdom. He can give you the gift of faith. He can give you working of miracles. He can give you gifts of healings. And we need to be available to that. And I'm telling you that if we're going to change our world, we need to stop playing evangelical patty cake and put on the armor of God and be filled with the spirit of God and be ready to go into battle and God will give us the weaponry and the gifts that we need to touch people in their destitute and desperate hour. Jesus had a word for her that he could not have known and called her out. Go call your husband. We should expect to operate in spiritual gifts. And she says, well, I can see you're a prophet. Not close enough, but we're changing the story. Are you with me still? I know that was a heavy load to drop right there in the middle of the message, but I'm telling you, the days are coming that we will not survive without the empowerment of the Spirit of God and all the gifts in operation in the children of God. We need to walk in that. It's gonna matter more than it ever has. We're getting closer, but more than a prophet. So Jesus then last overcame her religious objections. So what does she do? What is wrong with this woman? He calls her out. Everything he said is true. She's been married five times, divorced five times. She's living with a man she's not married to. And she says, our fathers worshiped in this mountain, but you Jews claim the place to worship is in Jerusalem. <laughs> Do you see how she just continues to deflect? She tries to bait into an argument, tries to change the subject. And this one, Jesus grabs hold of. He says to her, believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. 
for salvation is from the Jews. Now he's putting it right out in front of her. Yet a time is coming and now has come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth for they are the kind of worshipers that the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. He disarms the debate and goes right to the heart of the matter. This isn't about this isn't about Baptist or Assemblies of God or Lutheran or Methodist. This isn't about where you worship or your style of worship. It's the truth is there is a time coming and now is when it's about in spirit and in truth worshiping God. And he draws a line in the sand. There comes a time. And she says, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. Are you ready for this? I get goosebumps. I'm running up to this. I've preached this whole time to get to this verse. I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus looked her straight in the eye and said, I who speak to you am he. This is a moment of decision. This is a moment to decide. If you're gonna make it to heaven, you have to put your faith in Jesus Christ who came to earth, lived among us, died on the cross, was put into the tomb, rose from the dead, and ever lives to make intercession for the saints of God. He is the Messiah. He is the only way to heaven. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And I will not back up because of cultural pressure. I will not back up because of religious pressure. I will not back up because of the failings of the church. I will only declare Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And he's here in the house today. And that's the one that we serve. I am he. All of that conversation to bring it to an altar call, to bring it to a moment of decision. And the Bible says that she left her water jar. She was so impacted in that moment that she forgot why she came. (laughs) She's going to have to come back (coughs) and get that jar and get water. She left her water jar, went back to town, and I think this is hilarious. You got to forgive me, but I think this is the, be- the hilarious part of the story. Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. I promise you there were guys going to be at that meeting. <laughs> Come see a man. Ooh, did that include me? I'm, I'm just going to tell you, if she's had five and she's living with one, that wasn't all. Come see a man that's told me everything I ever did. Could this not be the Christ? So church, let me just say to you, in this whole thing of faith conversations, don't get distracted. This isn't about defending you. This isn't about defending politics. This isn't about defending the church. It's not about arguing or winning an argument. What is it about? It's introducing men and women to the one who loved them enough to come from heaven, die on the cross, rise from the dead. It's about introducing them to Jesus Christ and the life that he gives and keep bringing it back. You don't have to start there, but our conversations are intentional. They're purposeful. It may be a nudge here and a nudge there, but Our goal is not to win arguments. It's to make an introduction to Jesus. Did it work? Did she really change? Pastor Nathan, if you join me. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of her testimony. (laughs) Here's, Here's this. Immoral woman. I was searching for a word I could use. An immoral woman. They all knew her as that immoral woman in town. No morals. But they believed because of her testimony. Not the testimony of a priest. Not the testimony of a Pharisee or a Sadducee or even a rabbi. Why would they believe her testimony 
because they could see that something about her was different, that her life was changed. People will respond when they see the life of God in you changing you. Many believe because of her testimony. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. He stayed two days. And because of his words, many more believed. And they said, and this is the goal, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. We heard him for ourselves. We saw him for ourselves. We met him in person and we believe that he's the savior of the world. That's why we have the conversations. It starts with an invitation. It starts with an interaction. It starts with investing in someone's life. So I'd like every head bowed, every eye closed. I wasn't planning to do this. I just feel constrained by the Spirit of God this morning. If you're in a place where you've not made a commitment to Christ because of all the arguments, someone said to me, please don't look around, but someone said to me, they would never become an evangelical because all evangelicals support Trump. Well, number one, that isn't true. But it's not about Trump, it's about Jesus. Maybe there are political arguments that you've had. Maybe there are religious arguments. Maybe you had a construct of your own making that makes it impossible for you to believe. And I want to say to you, I want, to, I want you to introduce you to a man that told me everything I ever did and changed my life. And this is your morning to surrender. I don't know where you are. I don't have anyone in mind. But I believe there's somebody here who has struggled with arguments. And I'm calling you to walk away from the arguments and just meet the one who loves you. If that's you this morning with no one looking around, would you just slip up your hand? I just want to lead you in a prayer. Yes, thank you. Is there anyone else this morning? Just slip up your hand. Yes, thank you. Someone else this morning in the balcony on the main floor, the chapel online. Just slip your hand up. Anyone else this morning? I want to make that surrender. Yes, thank you. Anyone else this morning? The Spirit of God is moving in the room. You need to meet the man. You need to meet Jesus. All right, everyone, would you pray this prayer with me out loud? And those of you that raised your hand, and if you didn't raise your hand but need to pray the prayer, God will hear you and he will respond. Everyone with me out loud, dear Lord Jesus, I have failed and I need your help. I'm asking you to forgive my sins and make me new. I believe that you died on the cross so that my sins could be forgiven. I believe that you rose from the dead so that I could walk in newness of life. And I surrender my life to you. And I promise to serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that and meant that, I'm telling you that a work will begin in you that will change the world around you. And secondly, I wonder how many of us this morning would say, I want to be a conversationalist like Jesus was. I'm going to take time to sit down. I'm going to take time to listen for his voice. I won't get caught up in the political distractions. Jesus, help me to point other people to you. If that's your desire, um, I, would you just hold up your hand? I don't want to put anyone in the spot. Then let's stand together and ask him to burn that on the inside of us. Oh,
for anyone around you is introduce them to the one who loves them enough to die for them. Let's make sure we're sharing that message. And if you prayed that prayer and made a commitment of your life to Christ, we want to be able to connect with you. You can, you can text the keyword GROW to 77411 and that'll put you in interaction with us. We want to walk with you on the journey. Connect, or text the word GROW to 77411 and let us connect with you. 
Aren't you glad for Jesus? Yes. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you. Let's make this a victory week on our way to Easter. God bless you.